This is Cecil B. DeMille speaking to you from Hollywood, where two stars and a stage full of fine actors are at your command tonight. When we first talked about tonight's play, Ball of Fire, I thought then what a great show this will be for the boys abroad. Now, I, I hope you agree. And if you get a chance, let us know anything else you want to hear. But before the band strikes up tonight, I've asked Barbara Stanwyck and Fred McMurray to say hello. Barbara and Fred, meet the Army, the Navy, the Marines, and the Coast Guard. Hello, everybody. I mean you who've gathered around in a barracks in Ireland, the boys in that recreation hall in Alaska or Iceland, the group sprawled out on the deck of a boat plowing through the ocean. Looking over your shoulder are the shadows of another group around the fireside back in Buffalo or Brooklyn or a thousand other hometowns. They're listening to and pulling for you every minute. And so are we all. Say, by the way, fellas, I've been asked to give you a little reminder. Have you written home to your mother lately? She wants to know how you are and how you're getting along. It won't take but a minute. Good luck. And now, from Belfast to Melbourne, on with the show. Lux presents Hollywood. The Lux Radio Theater brings you Barbara Stanwyck and Fred McMurray in Ball of Fire. Ladies and gentlemen, your producer, Mr. Cecil B. DeMille. <laughs> Greetings from Hollywood, ladies and gentlemen. Our play tonight is purely educational. It's the fascinating story of a group of professors writing an encyclopedia. But don't turn that dial yet. It seems that to write a really good encyclopedia, one of the professors must fall in love with a nightclub singer, knock out a dangerous gangster, and arrive at a certain wedding before a certain lady says, I do. That's uh, one thing about writing an encyclopedia. You meet such interesting people, as screen audiences discovered when they crowded theaters to see the Samuel Goldwyn hit, Ball of Fire. Tonight you'll hear Barbara Stanwyck in the same glamorous role she played in the picture. And Fred McMurray as the professor who's making a scholarly study of modern slang. Made in America is stamped all over this picture. It couldn't happen anywhere else. And so I think it will be a welcome letter from home to the boys in the armed services throughout the world who'll hear this play by shortwave and other methods. On my way to rehearsal the other day, I saw a soldier and his girl looking at the posters in front of the theater. I asked them if they thought it would be a good show. They both said they'd seen the picture, and for their money, it was right in the groove. And then the young lady added, and you know that Lux toilet soap is just out of this world. <laughs> Naturally, after working with Ball of Fire all week, I was uh, pep to this phraseology. It means that you have some fine entertainment ahead when you hear Barbara Stanwyck and Fred McMurray tonight. And as for those people who haven't yet tried Lux Toilet Soap, they have an experience coming that's, well, what can Webster offer that's better than out of this world? Now here's Ball of Fire, starring Barbara Stanwyck as Sugar Puss O'Shea and, and Fred McMurray as Bertram Potts. In a very old-fashioned house in New York live eight very old-fashioned gentlemen. The house is the Totten Foundation, where the eight gentlemen are engaged in writing a new encyclopedia. These gentlemen are all very learned, all professors, all bachelors, and with one exception, all middle-aged. That exception is Professor Bertram Potts, the eminent authority on the English language. Now Professor Potts has made a devastating discovery. As the professors bend low over their desks, Potts enters the book-lined living room and clears his throat for attention. <clears throat> Gentlemen. Yes, Potts? What's the matter, Potts? Why aren't you at your desk? Gentlemen, I am going out. Going out? At nine o'clock in the morning. Yes, gentlemen. Miss Bragg, my hat, please. Yes, Professor? Professor Gurkakoff, uh, what's your prognosis on the weather? Uh, light showers toward the evening, but I don't think... My lashes, Miss Bragg, and my Macintosh. Yes, Professor Potts. What in Sam Hill Potts? Where are you going? Research, gentlemen. What research? Gentlemen, I have just made an astounding discovery. 
I was at the back door when the garbage men arrived for the garbage. We had a long conversation. You and the garbage man? The garbage man. What did he say? I don't know. What? I don't know what he said. Sit down, Pot. Sit down. I am perfectly well, Professor Robinson. But you don't know what the garbage man said. Did he speak English? Yes, but colloquial English. He spoke in slang. Gentlemen, it's catastrophic. I have just finished my article on slang. 23 pages compiled from a dozen reference books. Everything from the idiotic combination, absolutely, to the pejorative use of zigzag. I trace the evolution of hunky-dory. I track down skidoo. I might as well throw it all in the wastebasket. Three weeks of work. What? You're hysterical. My work on slang is outmoded, based on reference books 20 years old. Now take smooch. Take dish. Take hoi toy toy. Not one of them included. Do you know what smooch means, Professor Oddly? Um, no. Do you know the meaning of mouse, Professor Morgenbrush? A mouse? A mouse is a member of the rodent family. Wrong. A mouse is a young lady. So is a smooch. Money is moolah, and a dollar is a smackaroo. Who said so? The garbage man. <laughs> Gentlemen, living in this house off from, the, uh, off from the world, I've lost touch. That man talked living language. I embalmed some dead phrases. But where are you going? Out to collect new data. To tap the major sources of slang. The streets, the slums, the theatrical profession. Nightclubs. Nightclubs. I know it's regrettable, gentlemen, this loss of time, but it must be done. Your hat, Professor Potts. Well, thank you, Miss Bragg. Uh, just put the key under the mat. I won't be home tonight before nine. Good morning, gentlemen. Oh, Good morning. morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Ready to creep in cement killing. Read all about it. Corpses, dogs, Duncan, cement. Work strain. Hey, brother, what are you hanging around me for? Uh, disregard me completely, please. I'm just making a few notes. Well, beat it, will you, buddy? You give me the memes. The memes? The screaming memes. Extremely picturesque. I, I must add that to my list. Hey, listen, what goes? Young man, could I interest you in a research project in which you could be very helpful? Huh? If you would come to this address at 9.30 tomorrow morning, you will be doing a definite service to society. Hey, what are you promoting? Some kind of reform school? Hunk of man, full of prunes, cooly drooly, lauserilla, pretty gestanko. <laughs> boogie woogie, jive, jive, boogie woogie. I want to look keen so my dream will say Ain't I the lucky fella so keen that he'll scream Baby's in technicolor so make a brown gown With a zop top with a hip slip And a laced waist in the sharpest taste To see my Sunday man Well, I'll read, I'll read. Take it easy, you have cats. Now look, good people, the boys in the band are going to swing out for you while I rest the vocals. I'll be back later with a little more jive, brute, zoot, and solid de boot. How's about it? Yeah! Don't go away, you squid. Uh, young man, what is the name of the young lady who just sang? Her? Why, well, that's Sugar Puss O'Shea. I beg your pardon? Sugar Puss O'Shea. That's her name. Sugar Puss O'Shea. An astounding specimen. Uh, you ain't kidding, brother. Hey, hey, Sugar Puss. Yeah, Joe? Hey, listen, there's a couple of guys here to see you. Yeah, where? They said they're waiting in your dressing room. Couple of characters. Okay, thanks, Joe. Hiya, Shuggy. Hi, Shuggy. Well, hello, Pastrami. Hello, Asthma. What are you boys doing here? Come on, Shuggy, we're leaving. Leaving? Who is? You are in quick. Yeah, quick is right. What's the fever? Listen, Shuggy, you've got to take it on the lamp. Yeah, they're looking for you. Who's looking for me? The district attorney. Why? Come on, we'll talk about it in the taxi cab. Well, why can't you tell me now? What is all this? Well, it's on account of Benny the Creep had an accident. I never heard of Benny the Creep. Who is he? One of the boys. Yeah, yeah. He was on kind of an errand when he grazed into a police car, the dope. And for that, I've got to hide out? That don't make sense, Pastrami. No, no. You see, when the bulls give Benny a ticket, they seen Dave Kinnick in the back of the car. Yeah, dead. In the accident? That's what Benny was trying to tell him. Only they seen Kinnick's feet. Yeah, they was in a cake of cement. Benny was going to dump him in the East River, see? That was the errand. Get it? Hey, wait a second. Is Joe Lilac mixed up in this? Sure. The DA had him picked up about a half hour ago. That's why we're here. That's why you gotta beat it, Shuggy. Joe Lilac mixed up in a murder? Yeah. I don't believe it. Not for a second. He was framed, Shuggy. May I drop down dead, wasn't he, isn't he? Yeah. And then there was them pajamas they found. Pajamas? Yeah. That's where you come in. You remember that dozen pink ones you gave to the boss last Christmas before you knew that the only color Joe Lilac wears is lilac? Yeah. So he handed them out to the boys. And in the suitcase right beside Benny the Creep when he gets caught? 
is a pair with that big J.L. monogram. Quiet. Huh? Who is it? I'd like to speak to Miss O'Shea, please, uh, regarding an investigation I'm conducting. It's a copper. Get yeah. behind the curtain, Pastrami. Listen, Shuggy. Shut up, Asthma. Get over there in the closet. Okay. Just a second. Well? How do you do, Miss O'Shea? My name is Potts. I hate to intrude like Come this, Come on, but... cut the corners. What do you want? Well, this inquiry is one of considerable importance. Listen, stop beating up with the gum, see? What was that? Get this. I don't know from nothing. Oh, but you do. Every word you say proves as much. Yeah? Well, suppose you tell the DA to take a nice running jump for himself. A running jump? Bewildering. Say, how many of you are on this job? The entire project? Eight. Oh. The other seven waiting outside? Oh, no, no. They're at home. Uh, sound asleep, I imagine. Asleep? Yes, they go to bed at nine every night. You mean to tell me with crime what it is? Say, are you a bull or aren't you? A bull? Well, if bull is the slang word for professor, then I'm a bull. A professor? Yes, a professor of English. Oh. You see, I'm conducting an investigation on current slang. Would you object if I used you for observation and study? Yeah, I would. Well, if I could have your assistance for just a few days... It outside, would be... professor, outside. Then you, uh, you won't help me? No, out. Shove in your clutch. Shove in your clutch? That's exactly the kind of thing I want. P perhaps if I could come back Save again. Save the gas. I won't be here after tonight. Well, here's my card with the address of the foundation if you should happen to change your mind. It's my residence as well. Listen, not now. Well, I'll just leave it here by your purse. Okay, now scrow, scram, scraw. The complete conjugation. <laughs> All right, then. I'll scrow. Good night, Miss O'Shea. All right, boys, you can come on out. Okay, Shuggy, let's go, let's go. Listen, I've got to change my clothes. I can't go like this. No time, no time. Come on, Shuggy. Through the window and down the alley. Give me my coat and purse. At least let Grab me... Grab the purse, Asma. Well, come on, Shuggy. Okay, okay, Oni. I think you're a pair of cracked ice. Just keep cruising around, driver. We'll tell you where to go later. Okay. Yeah. Joe Lilac's apartment, they got sealed up like a can of coffee. Well, you live someplace, don't you? Mm, sure, and the cops know where. Say, I got an uncle who's an undertaker. He's always got an extra slab. Fine, that's all I need. Now look, Shuggy. Keep be... thinking. Hey, what's this? What's what? This card in my... Oh, it's that professor guy, Bertram Potts. Cotton Foundation, 44 East... Hey. Hey, what? Well, why not? Driver, the Totten Foundation, 44 East 65th. There's one thing I still don't understand, Potts. Uh, this girl you were talking about, her name you said was Sugar Puss? Yes, I was just about to explain about that, gentlemen. Uh, you see, the word puss means face. Yes, go yes. on. As, for instance, sour puss, pickle puss. A sugar puss implies a certain sweetness in her appearance. Oh, that's oh, that's oh, you spoke to her? Yes, in her dressing room. In her dressing room? Backstage? Yes, but unfortunately she disclaimed any interest in our project. No. In words so bizarre they made my mouth water. Shove in your clutch, for instance. Why, it's amazing. Potts, could you tell us, what is it like backstage? Very vivacious, I imagine. And perhaps ballerinas giggling up and down iron staircases? Round and round. Possibly wearing tights? Oh, I'm sorry, I, I didn't notice. Oh. oh. Listen, it's the doorbell. And at 12.25... Strange. See who it is, oddly. Oh, in my nightshirt. I seem to be the only one dressed. I'll go, gentlemen. It must be the figures on San Salvador, Salt Peter. I asked them to send it over. Yes? Heidi ho Professor. Don't tell me I'm too late for class. Miss... Miss O'Shea. It's a female. Oh! Here we are now. Say, what's all that going up the stairs? Uh, those, uh, those are my colleagues. Oh. I, I must apologize for the lack of costume. Oh, that's all right, Professor. And the fact that I haven't got my tie on. Oh, think uh... nothing of it. You know, once I watched my big brother shave. Well, uh, won't you come in? Why not? Frankly, your coming here was the last thing I expected. Your no was so explicit. Well, I got to thinking it over, and foo, I said to myself, who am I to give science the brush? Then I take it you've reconsidered? Yeah, that's a big idea. Wee, that's a lot of books you got there. All of them different? I trust. Uh-huh. May I have your coat? Yeah, thanks. If you just slip it off, I'll... Miss O'Shea! What's the matter? Well, your, your, your costume. Oh, do you like it? It's rather abbreviated. Is it? I never noticed. Uh, are you, uh, you sure you don't want your coat? No, I'm fine. Well, how do we start, Professor? You see, this is the first time anybody moved in on my brain. Have you got some kind of a machine, an x-ray, or a vacuum cleaner, maybe, that sorts out the words you want? What's your method, Professor? Well, it's quite simple. 
If you will be here tomorrow morning, not later than 9.30... Tomorrow morning? Oh, yes. I, I have arranged a roundtable discussion with a number of people of various backgrounds. Oh, you, uh... You don't think we could sort of begin the begin right now? Why, it, it's going on to 1 o'clock, Miss O'Shea. Oh, fool, Professor. Let's get ourselves a couple of drinks, light the fire, and you start working on me right away. Why, well, I, uh, I wouldn't think of imposing on you at this hour. Uh-huh. Okay, then, where do I sleep? Well, I don't know. Uh, where do you live? Up on Riverside, but I'm going to sleep here. Here? Oh, you don't understand, Miss O'Shea. You, you see, we're bachelors. Why, no woman ever. I, even Miss Bla Bragg, who takes care of our needs, goes home every night at 7.30. Listen, if you want me tomorrow morning at 9.30... Oh, I do, Miss O'Shea, but even the most free-thinking people must respect the... Uh, Come here, uh, Professor. Take off my shoe. What? Take off my shoe. Come on, go ahead. What? Yeah, that's right. Now feel that foot. Okay, Tootsie Bell, what do you say? It's, uh... It's cold. It's cold and it's wet. Oh, oh Pops, uh, may we come in? Sure, sure. Come on in, kids. Just step right over here. I want you to see something. Yes? Come here, here. Look down my throat. Ah, oh, all right. What do you see? I, uh, I don't know what to look for. There is possibly a slight rosiness in the laryngeal region. Slight rosiness? It's as scarlet as O'Hara. Who are you? Uh, this is Dr. Magenbush, our physiological expert. Oh. How do you do? And the Professor Robinson Law, uh -huh. and Professor sure. Gurkakoff Physics, uh, mm -hmm. Dr. Pegram History. How do you do? Professor Oddley Biology. Very Professor happy. Quintana Fine Arts. Okay. Hiya, boys. Come here, physiology. Feel my head. For all I know, I've got a fever. Mm, it's possible. Certainly. And this Potts fellow wants to throw me out of my tin. Oh, oh with cold. the street cold no, no. and the subway hot and full of germs. Yeah, and I'm a pushover for streptococcus. Oh, it will be quite all right. We'll call you a heated taxi and furnish you with woolen socks and warm slippers. How do you like that? Really, I don't understand you, Potts. Why take chances with valuable material? Think of your article, Potts. Yes, yes. Think of the encyclopedia. You see? They get the point. If I might venture a suggestion... Why couldn't the young lady sleep in my room? Well... Professor Audley. Oh, I, I, I can bunk with Professor Robinson. I sometimes do when there's an electric storm. Yes, he's afraid of thunder. Well, then it's all settled. Well, I guess I'll turn in. Can I have my coat? Oh, oh certainly. Yeah. Thank you. Well, hidey ho fellas. <laughs> hidey ho uh, Gentlemen, <laughs> just a moment, please, Miss O'Shea. Gentlemen, this is all highly irregular. What if this should come to the attention of the Foundation? And what about Miss Bragg tomorrow? Listen, what are you talking about? This is research, isn't it? So I yes. Yes. Certainly. And look, who was that guy learned so much from watching an apple drop? Isaac Newton, 1642, 1727, the law of gravity. Yeah, that's him. Well, I want you to look at me as another apple, Professor Potts. Just another apple. Good night, kid. <laughs> In just a few moments, Mr. DeMille and our stars, Barbara Stanwyck and Fred McMurray, will return in Act Two of Ball of Fire. And now, in a busy department store... Well, Mary, hello. Jane, what luck meeting you. You're just the person to help me decide about this blouse. Look, would you take it in the aqua shade or in the coral? It's for my black suit. Well, either shade will go, then. It's just a question of which is more becoming. Um, hold this to your face. Mm, now this. Oh, goodness, I don't know. You look lovely in either, with a skin like yours. Isn't it the truth? A lady with a lovely complexion can wear just about any color she pleases, and always be told it's becoming. Yes, perhaps there's nothing that makes a woman seem more beautiful than soft, flower-like skin. That's why it's so important to give your precious complexion gentle, protecting care. To neglect it a single day, you know, is to take chances with good looks. Screen stars realize this. Madeline Carroll says, Complexion beauty should be cherished, so it's important to use a real beauty soap. I never neglect my daily active lather facials with Lux Toilet Soap. Any woman can give her skin this simple care that helps it stay lovely. Now there's a tip worth taking. This beautiful blonde star is famous for her smooth, creamy skin. Why not try her Lux Toilet Soap beauty care for 30 days? Here's the way Madeline Carroll takes an active lather facial. I pat the wonderful creamy lather lightly in. I rinse with warm water and then with cool and pat my face gently with a soft towel to dry. And when I touch my skin, it feels so smooth. Yes, when you use Lux Toilet Soap, you know its rich, active lather removes stale cosmetics, every trace of dust and dirt thoroughly, but gently, too. Gives your skin real beauty care. 
You'll enjoy the caressing touch of that creamy, abundant lather on your skin. And because every satin smooth cake of Lux Toilet Soap is hard milled, it's truly economical to use. Get three cakes of this luxurious white soap tomorrow. Now, our producer, Mr. DeMille. Act two of Ball of Fire, starring Fred McMurray as Professor Potts and Barbara Stanwyck as Sugar Puss O'Shea. <laughs> Sugar Puss O'Shea is in hiding, and the Totten Foundation is in an uproar. On the morning after her arrival, a delegation of professors appears at her bedroom door. Seven men, all carrying one small suitcase. Hello, kids. Say, what time is it? Ten o'clock. Professor Potts started the round table discussion an hour ago. He did? Say, that's investigating. And this came for you, this suitcase. Yeah, who brought it? A couple of persons of peculiar names they had, too. One was called Pastrami. Any message? What'd they say? Well, they said it's getting hotter and to stay in the icebox like a good little salad. And this is the dressing in the suitcase. We wondered what it meant. Yes. Well, I'll tell you, sweetie. Dressing is short for a dress, you see? Oh. Oh, yes, of course. Gentlemen, where are you? It's Miss Bray. <gasps> oh, my goodness. Gentlemen. Sounds like mother calling, kids. You better get downstairs. Yes, good morning, Miss O'Shea. See you around, kids. Gentlemen, where are you? Uh, we are coming, Miss Bragg. We are coming. Here we are, Miss Bragg. Uh, good morning, Miss Bragg. I would like to talk to you. I want to ask you what were all your trousers doing in my kitchen. Well, I wanted mine pressed. That accounts for one pair. I did too. I mine 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 pair. Pair. Pressed also. Seven pairs all at once? What's going on in this house anyway? What were you doing upstairs? Uh, we, uh, we took up a suitcase. Suitcase? Whose suitcase? Well, well, Miss Bragg, there is, there's someone staying with us. Who? Who's staying with us? Well, under the pressure of a very trying assignment, Professor Potts has taken a temporary assistant. Oh, so we're running a hotel now. Uh, not exactly. It seems to me that... Professor Robinson, is that one of your socks over there? Where? On the floor. No, not mine. Why... Look, it's a woman's stocking. Gentlemen, I know Professor Pegram explains the corset he wears as due to a floating kidney. But what is the explanation of this? Hiya, kids, I'm stuck. Can any of you jerk a zipper? Good heavens. The darn thing's stuck. Oh, hello, who are you? Uh, this, this is our Miss Bragg. Did you say bag? <laughs> Bragg. How do you do? Greedo. You know anything about zippers? I do not. Oh, button girl, huh? Okay, come on, Gurky, hitch me up in the back. Well, I can try. Atta boy. Now, where's this little clam bake of Professor Potts? Oh, in, in the, the dining, dining room, room. Oh, just across the hall. In the dining room, swell. Well, good morning, Miss Bag. See you later, kids. <gasps> oh! Come in. Oh, yes, Miss Bragg. May I have a word with you, Professor Potts? Oh, yes, certainly. Uh, Miss Bragg, that music, is it from next door? No, from this door, from the library. And that's what I want to talk to you about. Well, what's going on in there? It's that woman, Professor Potts. She's in there with the rest of the gentlemen. Really? Well, what are they doing? They have just formed a Lakanga line. Well, what's that? I refuse to describe it. Professor Potts, that's the kind of woman that makes whole civilizations topple. And I warn you, either she goes or I go. I don't like Ultimata, Miss Bragg, but I shall look into the matter. Don't look into the matter. Look into the library. Very well, Miss Bragg. Snap it up, Gurky. One and two. One and two. That's it. That's it. Gentlemen, please. <laughs> turn off that Potsy. gramophone. Hiya, Potsy. Climb on the comet. Uh, thank you, no. As soon as you gentlemen catch your breath, we'd better have a conference. Will you please leave the room, Miss O'Shea? But we've only just started. If you please, Miss O'Shea. Oh, loose tooth again. Okay, so long, boys. Now, sit down, gentlemen. Hi, Shuggy. Who is it? It's me, Pastrami. Open the window. Hi, Shuggy. Hello, Shuggy. Well, it's Puss. about time. I thought you two had amnesia and forgot where you parked me. Hold it, Shuggy. Quiet. Dropping me on the doorstep like a throwaway for a credit dentist. You said it was for one night. Hold it, Shuggy, for Pete's sake. You're as hot as a pistol. The DA's got a hundred men on the job. You tell up, Pastrami. Yeah, yeah. They're tailing us, Shuggy. It'd take us three hours to get here from 48th Street. Okay, stay right there. I'll get my things together in two seconds flat. Hey, wait a minute, Shuggy. We, uh, we got a surprise for you. Yeah, you're not leaving, Shuggy. Not right now. I'm not. Joe's out, isn't he? Well, for how long? They're laying for you so they can get him back. That's the surprise. 
I'm supposed to stay in this old man's home till the moths eat holes in me. Say, when I say a surprise, I mean a surprise. Go on, Pastrami. Flash it to her. Put on your sunglasses, Shuggy. We got a kind of little ring here for you. A kind of diamond one. Oh, boy. Let me see it. Seven grand boiled into that rock, Shuggy. Oh. Oh, Joe doesn't have to bribe me just because I do him a little favor. Let him try and get it back, though. <laughs> Oh, say, it ain't your size, is it? It'll do if I have to whittle down my finger. Third finger, left hand, sugar. Who do you think you're kidding? The future Mrs. Joe Lilac. Come again? Wedding bell, sweetheart. Joe and the lawyer have got it all figured out. Yeah, yeah, a wife cannot testify against her husband, see? Don't put it like that, you dope. Huh? Sugar, Joe's been that way about you ever since he first picked you out. Yeah, but it took the DA to make him pop the question. He sent you a love message. He said to tell you he gets more bang out of you than any dame he ever knew. And he's the top, Shuggy. You realize that? He's the top. Yeah, Mrs. Joe Lilac. Third Avenue girl in the major league at last. Look, Shuggy, the wedding's got to be a fast one. Over New Jersey someplace. Now, here's the application for the license and your sign right here. Will I? You got a pen? Uh, yeah, here. Yeah. Unscrew it for Mrs. Lila. Right here, right here. Go ahead, son. Oh, boy, were those pajamas a good investment. You'll get the final dope by tomorrow morning. Joe, phone around 10 o'clock. In the meantime, lay low and stick close to the Amici. The what? The telephone. Oh. Oh, Miss Sugarpuss. Oh, duck, you guys. 10 o'clock, I'll be waiting. Okay, okay. Uh, Miss Sugarpuss. Here I am, Professor Audley, just getting a little air. What's buzzing, cousin? Uh, Professor Potts. He wishes to speak to you alone. Oh, yeah? Where? In the library, Miss O'Shea. Yes. Okay. Say, what's the matter? Oh, don't worry, kids. Cheer up. Hiya, Potsy. What's cooking? Shut the door, please. Sure. Take this chair, please, Miss O'Shea. This particular one? Okay. Open your mouth, please. Huh? Open your mouth. Wider. Mm. Thank you. Can I close it now? Please do. Okay. Miss O'Shea, the sky is perfectly clear. The thermometer stands at 76. Your throat seems quite normal. I must ask you to leave. Leave here? Why? Miss O'Shea, I want you to look at our project, I mean the encyclopedia, as a voyage. A voyage from A to Z. When the foundation launched our vessel, it very wisely followed an old rule of the sea. No women aboard. It chose a crew of single men with nothing to distract them from the course they were to sail. Say, Junior, you couldn't stop walking around a little, could you? For the last four days, we have been drifting, Miss O'Shea. The needle of the compass no longer points to the magnetic pole. It points, if I may say, to your uh, ankles. Oh, come now, Admiral, a bunch of grown men. They've seen a pair of ankles before. Not for nine years, except for the singularly uninspiring underpinnings of Miss Bragg. You must leave, Miss O'Shea. But I can't leave now. How about that slang? It's not finished yet. That's a lot of words we haven't caught up with. For instance, do you know what this means? I'll get you on the Amici? Uh, no. Of course you don't. An Amici is the telephone on account of he invented it. Oh, no, he didn't. Uh... You know, in the movies. Oh, I see what you mean. It's, uh, it's very interesting. Make no mistake, I shall regret the absence of your keen mind. Unfortunately, it is inseparable from an extremely disturbing body. Why, Potsy. All right, I'll go. Only don't shove. I'll leave sometime tomorrow. No, not tomorrow. Right away. But I tell you, I can't. I insist, Miss O'Shea. Oh, old crab apple Annie. Listen, Potsy, Crab I... apple Annie? Why, that implies I'm puritanical and narrow-minded. Yeah, I am a perfectly normal man with perfectly normal instincts. But an awful high boiling point. Not even that. I, too, have been acutely aware of your presence. You have? Twice, to be exact. Once when you leaned over my shoulder to correct my spelling of the word hepcat, I could feel your breath on my ear. And then yesterday afternoon when you happened to stand against the window with the sunlight in your hair. Well, what did you do about it? I, uh... I left the room, dipped my handkerchief in cold water, and applied it to the back of my neck, right here with a nerve center. <laughs> oh, that's cute. Oh, a little sun in my hair, and you had to water your neck. Well, uh, <laughs> perhaps I shouldn't have mentioned it. I'm merely trying to point out, Miss O'Shea, the fact that the success of our entire project is at stake. I want you to cooperate. I want you to leave. Oh, all right, I'll go. But if I'm going to go anyway, I guess I might as well spill it. Spill it? Spill what? Why do you suppose I came here in the first place? Why, to help with the research. I did not. I came here on account of you. Me? And not on account of you needed some slang. On account of because I wanted to see you again. Miss O'Shea, the construction on account of because outrages every grammatical law. So what? I came on account of because I couldn't stop thinking about you after you left my dressing room. On account of because I thought you were cute and pretty. 
pretty. Yeah. Or maybe I'm just crazy, but to me, you're a regular yum-yum type. Yum-yum? Yeah. Don't you know what that means? Well, no, we, uh, we never got to that. Well, we've got to it now, and I'm glad it's out. I'm wacky about you, just plain wacky. Can you understand that? Come here. Oh, now, please, Miss O'Shea. Uh, please, oh, Miss O'Shea. please, nothing. Put your arms around me, Potsy. Oh, no, no. What are you going to do? I'm going to show you what yum-yum is. Oh, now, please, Miss O'Shea. Here's uh, yum. No. <laughs> oh, Miss O'Shea. Here's the other yum. <laughs> Miss O'Shea. And here's yum-yum. <laughs> oh, Miss O'Shea. What's the matter, Potsy? Uh, excuse me. I, I'd better... Uh, hey, I, excuse Potsy, me. come back here. Well, come in. What, well, Miss, uh, Miss O'Shea? What's the idea of running out of me like that? Well, uh, nothing, nothing. I just come uh, over here. Uh, just a moment, please. Oh, Miss Bragg. Yes. Uh, will you call a taxi from the corner for Miss O'Shea, please? I certainly will. Oh, I'm leaving, huh? Miss O'Shea. The last few minutes have only confirmed my former decision. Your further presence here would be fatal. You must get me out of your mind just as I must get you out of this house. Your hair's wet. Well, never mind, please. <laughs> well, it is wet. Well, what of it? Nothing. I just happened to mention well, it. Well, forget it, please. Okay, okay. Now, <clears throat> to get back to the subject under discussion... All right. It would be idle of me to deny that I, too, feel the affinity that you mentioned a few minutes ago very strongly. Perhaps... After three years, when my work is finished, we can take up where we left off. In the meantime, I... I hope we may keep up some kind of correspondence. Would you, Miss Sugarpuss? Oh, Potsy. I know. That's the way I feel, too, but, but it has to be. Uh, and Miss Sugarpuss, before you go, would you... Would you, uh, yum me just once more? <laughs> He is just... Professor Potts! Uh, yes? What is it? The taxi is here. Taxi? Uh, what taxi? Miss O'Shea's or mine? It's all yours, Crab Apple Annie. <laughs> Who is it? Hello. Come in. Good morning, Potsy. Good morning. I, uh... I brought you breakfast. Good. I'll have it right here in the snooze stand. Thank you. How do you take your coffee? Oh, just Jav. No cow. Just what? Black. Oh. Sugar? Straight. Uh, toast? No, thanks. You're sure you don't want some toast? Uh-uh. Well, there's some jam to go with it. it it's very good. Uh-uh. Never use it. Not just one bite? Uh-uh. Sit down and take a load off your feet. Say, I found out what's wrong with on account of because. It's saying the same thing twice. You know, like calling somebody a rich millionaire. You call it a... A pleo... No, now, wait a minute. A plea... A pleonasm. Yeah, that's it. Who told you that? Oh, this room's full of books about grammar. I read for a couple of hours last night. I couldn't sleep either. I walked in the park till the sun came up over the East 60s. No kidding. It's a very important moment. A new chapter, in fact, for me. It's the first chapter. But what has my life been up to now? A preface. An empty forward. You couldn't talk a little plainer, could you? Oh, not if you won't have a piece of toast. I, at least just... Uh, just look under the lid. What for? Please. Oh. Oh, you went and bought me a present. Oh, Potsy. I, I hope it fits. Uh, Gurkakov calculated the circumference of your finger. I woke up the jeweler at 7 o'clock this morning. Oh, it's a lovely ring, Potsy. Really it is. I, I hoped you'd like it. It's our, our engagement ring. Potsy, do you mean that? Well, yes, I do. I... You mean you really... You really want to... Why not? Well... What am I supposed to say? Why, just say yes. After you've declared your feelings, it's the only logical step to take. Patsy, don't you think you'd better take another turn around the park? Oh, I'm just as surprised as you. Marriage. I thought I was married to my books, and, and then you... You see, I've had a rather curious life. I, I graduated from Princeton when I was 13. I, uh, I recited Tiger, Tiger Burning Bright when I was a year old. And before I was two, I could read fluently. People like that just... Well, you see, dust just piles up on their hearts. And it took you to blow it away. Yeah, but I... I didn't mean to blow it smack into your eyes. 
Hello, kids. There's a telephone call for you, Miss O'Shea. For me? We didn't want to interrupt, but the man on the wire said it was from your daddy. Daddy? That's what he said. Oh. Oh, yes, daddy. It's long distance. Oh, yeah, I'll get it. Just tell him to hold on. I'll be right down. Hello? Hello? Hello, Shitty. This is Asthma. Listen, Joe Lanark wants to talk to you, only we're relaying the call so it won't be traced. Dig me? I got it. Here she is, boss. Okay, Shitty. Don't use no names, though. Put them on. Hi, Sugar Puss. Oh, boy, did you call at the right minute. Where are you? Uh, some whistle snort in New Jersey. Red Cocos is called. Well, how you been, Shitty? I hear you're hiding out with the seven dwarves. Eight, and it's kind of indicated. I'd better get out of here quick. Yeah? Why? Oh, one of the professors got off the beam a little. A slight case of Andy Hardy. Now, listen, Shuggy. Everything's all set. The license comes through this afternoon, and I got a justice of the peace all lined up. Yeah, well, how am I going to get there? Uh, that's what we're trying to figure out. I don't want you to take a train. It's much like a lead dime. I don't care if I have to hook a ride on a hearse. I want to get out of here. I don't like it. May we come in a moment? Oh, uh, well, uh, what other news is there, Daddy? Huh? How is Mama, Daddy? What are you talking about? Oh, that's fine. Just a minute, Daddy. Uh, Patsy, I won't be long. Just wait in the library. Uh, do you mind if I have a few words with your father first? Oh. <laughs> oh, well, uh, sure. Oh, uh, Daddy, this is the professor I was telling you about. Are you nuts? Here he is, Daddy. Hello, hello listen. Hello, uh, Mr. O'Shea. My name is Bertram Potts. I, uh, I judge your daughter has already told you of my aspirations in her regard. Hey, what's going on there? Oh, you're, you're quite right, Mr. O'Shea. It's, it's inexcusable for one to introduce oneself to one's future father-in-law over the telephone, but before entrusting your daughter's future happiness to my care, I, I'm sure you ought to know all about me. Oh, oh, sure, sure, why not? Well, as character reference, you might get in touch with the head of the Rockefeller Institute, uh, the foundation, and the president of Princeton. And I may say I'm in excellent physical condition. Except for occasional trouble with my left sinus. Uh huh. Well, how's your digestion, son? Oh, very good, very good, sir. <laughs> and I, uh, I draw a salary of three thousand two hundred dollars per year. Oh, that's fine. That's fine. And Mr. O'Shea, I'd like to marry your daughter as soon as possible. Oh yeah. Uh, say, uh, wait a minute. Uh, sure, sure, good idea. Oh, I'm glad you understand, uh, look, sir. Look, uh, uh, what did you say your name was? Bertram Potts. Bertram. Uh, well, Bertram. Uh, well, I, I don't know if Sugar Puss told you, but she's our only child. Well, I'll do everything I can, Mr. O'Shea, to make her happy. Good. Uh, and one thing more, Bertram. Mama's kind of an invalid. You know, doesn't do any traveling, you know. But it would just break her heart not to see Sugar Puss married. You understand that? Oh, of course, sir. Sure, sure. So suppose you just bring the kid right down here. Now, we want to see you, and, and let's have the ceremony in our hometown, Rancocas. Why, of course, Mr. O'Shea. May I call you Father, Mr. O'Shea? Sure. Sure, I like it. Oh, thank you, Father. Now, uh, let me speak to my daughter. Oh, certainly, sir. Uh, here, he wants to speak to you. Hello, Daddy. Well, Shuggy, this solves your transportation. That jack was made to order. I don't get it, Daddy. Look, who's going to stop the Rockefeller Foundation at Princeton University? I'll get a couple of the other old beavers that come along in the car. Yeah, well, maybe there's some other way. I, uh... I don't want to take them for that kind of a ride. Oh, that's quite all right. I'll take a couple of days off. No, and uh, uh, listen... Cut out uh, the man, can't you, Shuggy? This gets you there, Aunt Clocus. Now, once you're here, we'll give the professors the boot easy like, where it won't blind them. Yeah, but I don't now, like... just one thing. Watch out for the Washington Bridge. It'll be swarming with cops. So long, Shuggy. Wait, listen, you... What's the matter, dear? Oh, he's always in such a rush. <laughs> Which is my great good fortune. The sooner the better. Is it all settled, Potts? Is everything fixed? Everything is fine. Oh, good. Gentlemen... I now have the honor to announce our betrothal. My oh, oh, yes. Very sensibly condensed as in the Reader's Digest. I want to be an usher. Yeah, we all want to be yeah, ushers. Well, one that. kisses the bride, may I? Oh, we'll all kiss the bride. Oh, yeah. My dear, we are very happy. Thank you. We feel that you are marrying all of us a little. Yes, yes, indeed. Thanks a lot. Well, if we're going to get started this afternoon, I better get going, I'll... I'll go up and pack my things. Certainly, certainly. certainly. Oh. What are you doing in my room, Miss Gregg? I came up to show you the morning paper. Sugarfuss O'Shea missing in citywide search. 
gangster's mall disappears. Mm, kind of a cheesy picture of me, isn't it? Recognizable, thank heaven. Wait a minute. Get your things together and get down the back stairs before I call the police. I've got something to say, Miss Bragg. Gangster's mall thinking she'd marry one of my professors. Oh, don't worry. I'm not marrying any professor. Certainly not. We'll have this room fumigated when you're out of it. Well, you ought to, I guess. Sit down a minute. Let me pass, please. Oh, no, no, Braggo. Any spilling that's done, I'll do, but not yet. If you think I'll hold now my tongue... look at it this way, Braggo. The harm's been done. Patsy's going to wear his heart in a sling whether he finds out sooner or later. Here or in New Jersey won't make any difference to him. Only in New Jersey is a darn sight better for me. Better for you, indeed. Get out of my way. Oh, no, Open no. that door or I'll scream. No, Braggo, I can't have you screaming. Not now. Let me go. Braggo, you wouldn't want me to sock you. Let go. Cut it out now. Ah! Look! Sorry, Brago, but I got a date in Rancocas. We pause now for station identification. This is the Columbia Broadcasting System. After a brief intermission, Mr. DeMille presents Barbara Stanwyck and Fred McMurray in Act Three of Ball of Fire. And now for a moment, let's drop in at a party where boys in army uniforms are dancing with girls dressed in their prettiest. Sweet and lovely, sweeter than the roses in May. I like that song, Betty. Sweet and lovely. You know something, Betty? That's the way I always think of you. Sweet and lovely. Now, there's about the nicest compliment a man could pay a woman. And it's the way a man likes to think of the girl who's captured his heart. So it's a clever girl who does everything possible to live up to that ideal. It's a clever girl who knows the importance of sweet, fragrant skin and never takes chances with the charm that wins. The charm of daintiness. Especially when it's so easy to make sure with the Screen Stars Beauty Soap, Lux Toilet Soap. Screen Stars, you know, use their gentle complexion soap as a daily bath soap, too. For Lux Soap has such rich, creamy lather, active lather that carries away every trace of dust and dirt from the skin, leaves it beautifully fresh and sweet. Now, here's what one of our loveliest Hollywood stars, Rosalind Russell, says. The girl who wants to be attractive makes daintiness sure. A daily Lux Soap beauty bath does the trick. Leaves skin delicately perfumed, too, with a wonderful fragrance that clings. If you haven't tried it, why not make this luxurious perfumed bath part of your daily beauty routine? You'll find Lux Toilet Soap lathers easily and quickly. Gives a creamy, soothing lather. It's like a caress to the skin. So take a tip from Hollywood. Make sure you're sweet and lovely. Make sure of daintiness, the easy, delightful Lux Toilet Soap way. Now, Mr. DeMille returns to the microphone. Act three of Ball of Fire, starring Fred McMurray and Barbara Stanwyck. The wedding party is headed for New Jersey. In a rented car, they speed at 20 miles an hour along the road to Rancocas. Professor Gurkakov is driving, but he's none too sure of himself. Suddenly a signpost looms up in front of the car. The car swerves and skids. Hello. Hello, Joe. Shuggy, where are you? Listen, Joe, we had an accident. An accident? Oh, nothing serious. It just shook the old boys up a little. I couldn't get to a phone before. Oh, where are you? Oh, I don't know. It's in some kind of an auto court near Kingston. Poplar Grove, it's called. What's the number of your bungalow? What's the difference? In case I want to reach you. Wait a minute. I'll look. Ha! Huh. Lucky me. It's 13. 13, eh? Okay. Listen, Joe, don't call me here. There's a midnight bus. I can grab that. Midnight bus? What are you talking about? I'll have Aspen and Pastrami pick you up in about 40 minutes. Oh, Joe, why not do the thing right? I want to wait until the old boys have gone to bed. I can't walk out on them cold. Maybe you'd like to sit down and knit them eight sweaters to remember you by. Well, I've told you how it's going to be. Now, stop barking orders. So long. I would like 
tell you, it was just bad driving. Nothing but bad driving. Gentlemen, gentlemen, please. I could prove to you by the laws of relativity that it was not I who ran into the signpost, but the signpost which ran into me. Uh, but but you you Turkey, you before you go into this, I think I'll say good night. I want to hit the hay and get some sleep. Why, the evening is young yet. No, I don't belong here. This is a bachelor dinner. Ah, but this one is different. Well, that's the law. We've heard from the garage. The car will be ready in the morning. Perhaps it will hold together till we get to Rancocas. We'll be leaving early. Uh, what time shall we awaken you? About 7.30? Oh, I'll be awake, all right. Well, kids, here's to you. Sweet I dreams. Good night. Good night. Good night, Patsy. Good night. Patsy, I... Uh, you know, you boys still have time to warn him. A man is a goof to marry any woman. Just let them try to warn me. He'll have to console us that there aren't seven more just like you. Yes, one for each of us. Of a sort. It ages, of course. You know, I'd... I'd like to keep you all in a locket always. Eight squirrely cherubs right out of this world. Goodbye, kids. Au revoir. Au revoir. Good night, gentlemen. Oh, uh, oh, Gurkakoff. Uh, yes, Pats. Did you, uh, did you hear what Audley was saying about marriage? Yes. Well, I'm a little worried. I think I ought to talk to him again. Uh, what's his bungalow number? Uh, let me see. Uh, Audley is in 13. 13. Uh, that's right over there. His light is out. He's probably ready for bed. Oh, I don't think he'll mind. Good night. Uh, good night, Pat. Oddly, may I come in? Uh, don't turn on the light, Oddly. I, I, I prefer to discuss these things in the dark. Oddly, the things you were telling me before, I, I recognize the beauty and delicacy of the relationship you described, but well, I'm, I don't trust myself. I'm afraid I'm a lot bolder than you are, Oddly. You see, I, I'm a man in love. It's the first time in my life. I want to take her in my arms. I think of her every waking moment. Why, if this marriage had been delayed, I, I mean, should have been delayed, I mean, should be... Listen to that, Oddly. I, I don't know my tenses anymore. I've gone goofy, completely goofy. Patsy. What? Oh, I, I'm sorry. Oh, don't leave, Patsy. Well, I, I don't know how I could have made such a mistake. You'll have to forgive me, please. Oh, don't apologize, Patsy. It, it was illuminating. Would you kiss me, Patsy? Well, if you, if you think... Oh, yes. Yes, I do. Professor. Professor Potts. Somebody... Professor Potts. Somebody's calling me. Are they... Yes, maybe it's just as well. Maybe. Good night. Good night. Uh, Professor Potts. Right here. What's the matter? Uh, Potts, something has come up. Well, what? Well, I, I, uh, you'd better tell him, Gurkakov. Uh, maybe, maybe he'd better tell him. Uh, yes, yes. He? Who? Uh, Potts, there's a, a gentleman here. No, 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 there's a, ma a man here. No, no, a form in. Yes, yes. Uh, they, uh, <laughs> they'll tell you. Well, who are they? Over here in the office. One of them is called Joe Lyle. Come on in, gents. The stomach cover that door. Sure, Asma, watch the window. Okay, boss. Oh, so you're the bridegroom, huh? Yes, this is Professor Pops. Uh, hiya, Bertram. I thought you'd look like these other squats, only with a beard and pea soup on it. What is this all about? <laughs> Maybe you recognize my voice, Bertram. Oh, do you? How's your sinus? Why, you're not her father. You're getting warm. I'm her daddy. I believe I'm entitled to some clarification. Yeah? Well, so am I. What's that on your face? Lipstick? Lipstick? Oh, 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 Shut up! Shut up! It was kind of counting on sugar push to tell you the score. Trouble is, when it comes to leveling off, she gets chicken. He's trying to say that our wedding trip was nothing but a vast lie. A vast lie, don't you believe it, Bertram? There's going to be a wedding, all right. With sugar push the bride, only I'm the bridegroom. But it seems that your bride to be his bride. <laughs> That's a laugh. It seems sugar push has used us to circumvent the police. We're serving as protective coloration. Yes. I don't believe it. Now, Professor, you didn't really think she was going to marry you. With your 3000 a year? <laughs> she spends that much for having her toenails painted. Eh, you don't believe it. Look at him. All right. Suppose you go and tell Sugar Puss that Daddy's here. Boss. Boss, listen. It's a cop. Get away from that window, quick. <laughs> There's a Mr. Lilac waiting for you. Yeah, I know. The situation has been expla explained to me in simple terms. You don't have to worry about the police. I told them you and he left a half an hour ago. Probably we're in Trenton by now. 
Thanks, Parkman. Thanks. For what? You've given us all a fine course in the theory and practice of being a sucker. It was a very small tuition fee. Perhaps it wasn't quite worthy of you choosing us as the subjects of your demonstration. Eight pushovers, like shooting fish in a barrel. I didn't want you to get it this way, not right in the face. I've been... I've been sitting here trying to write you a letter. Here are all my excuses. This page is blank. That's right. The handwriting of a... What would be your word for it? My word? A tramp. Now, listen, Shuggy, I'm losing patience, see? I got that justice waiting. Now, what do you say? I said no, and I still say no. Hey, boss, we gotta get out of here. Shut up. Look, Shuggy, what's that professor guy got on you? I love him. She loves him. Yeah, I love him. I love those hick shirts he wears with the boiled cuffs and the way he always has his vest button wrong. Looks like a giraffe, and I love him. I love him because he's the kind of a guy that gets drunk on a glass of buttermilk. I love him because he doesn't know how to kiss. Oh, I'll never see him again. But I'm not going to marry you. Not if you tie a ton of cement around my neck and throw me into the East River like you did all the others. All right. I guess you'd better talk to your professor. Get him on the phone, Harry, that foundation joint. Leave him out of this. Imagine that big giraffe at the bottom of the East River. Now, you wouldn't like that to happen to him, would you, Sugarbush? That ain't funny, McGee. Who said it's funny? Hello, New York. Endicott 2, 1, I mean eight. business. That is, if you don't say I do like a nice little bride. You can't do this, Joe. It's too late, Shuggy. The pressure's on already. What is this, putting the screws on me? You said it. And right where it'll do the most good. Neighborhood of the heart. Hello, this is Harry. Hang on. Here you are, boy. You take it, Shuggy. Who's that on the phone? The Totten Foundation. But you'll be speaking to Pastrami. Hello? Hello, Shuggy. How's the kid? What are you doing there, Pastrami? Oh, just dropped in on the professors. Yeah. Ask me with our little old shotgun. We're all sitting around waiting. Waiting for what? Mm, orders from the boss. For orders? Oh, yeah, I get it. Can we make a deal now, Shuggy? Sure we can, Brother Rat. Pastrami put Patsy on. I want to speak to him. Okay. I get Pats, a lady friend of yours. Hello? Patsy. Patsy, listen. Your friends are here, Miss O'Shea. They're holding us all prisoners for some reason or other. I don't know the exact purpose of this maneuver or what can be gained from us, but I hope it works out to your advantage. I'm sorry, Patsy. But it'll be all right in a little while. They won't hurt anybody. Just... Just don't do anything foolish. Promise me, Patsy. Here. Yeah. Okay, Bertram. Put Miss Tommy back on. He wants to talk to you, Mr. Pastrami. Yeah. Hello, boss. Now, listen, Pastrami. Yeah? Shuggy and I are getting married. When it's all over, I'll call you. Okay, boss, we'll wait. We'll dismiss the class right after the ceremony. That's it. So long. So long. Uh, congratulations, boss. We can go do on. Some Go on. on. Get back, you guys. Get Pardon back. me, but did you say after the ceremony? That's what I said. Do you mean they're not married yet? What do you think we're doing here? Well, I didn't know. I thought... Uh... Yeah, yeah, a little trouble with Sugar Puss's vocal cords. Wouldn't say yes. She wouldn't say yes? No. Why, you very ugly young man, do you know that to me at this moment you look perfectly delightful? Huh? I mean absolutely beautiful. Are you nuts? Gentlemen, this visit is no longer a mystery. Apparently it requires those two machine guns leveled on us to force Sugar Puss to marry Mr. Lilac. That explains everything. Break it up, break it up. We can't allow that. No, no, indeed, young man. You see, we all love this young lady very dearly. Get back, you guys. I'm warning you. In union, there is strength, Mr. Pastrame. If we rush them all at once, gentlemen, perhaps only two or three of us will be killed. Cut it out now. Get them, gentlemen. Get them, gentlemen. <laughs> Hurry, hurry. Mr. Pastrami said the ceremony was to be at Fulham, New Jersey. Gentlemen, I've been meaning to ask. Uh, was anybody shot? Uh, just I, I believe. A slight wound in the finger. See, gentlemen? Oddly, you're a hero. Oh, please. Putz, Putz, uh, what's that book you're reading? A volume I picked up in the library. It's called The Manly Art of Self-Defense. A very interesting maneuver in here, gentlemen, is called The Old One, Two. <laughs> Come on, 
justice. Let's get going. Repeat after me, please. I, Joseph Lilac. I, Joseph Lilac. Head of Murder Incorporated. Shut up, shut up. Take thee, Catherine O'Shea. Take thee, Catherine O'Shea. Who hates and despises you. To be my lawful wedded wife. To be my lawful wedded wife. For better or for worse. For better or for worse. For worse. For richer or poorer in sickness and in health. For richer or poorer in sickness and in health. I'm sick right now. For heaven's sake, what's all that? Forget it. Keep going. Huh? Keep going. Keep going. To love and to cherish. To love and to cherish. There they are. Patsy! Have the there? guns, gentlemen. Hey, look over me. Hey, what is this? This, Mr. Lilac, is what is known as an upstick. No, no, I stick up. Keep them covered, gentlemen. <laughs> Professor Pegram, you call the police, please. Delighted, delighted. Hardly stand by that window. Gurkakoff, you watch the door. Now, Mr. Lilac, just step up here, please. Listen, you can't get away with this. Mr. Lilac, put up your fist, fist please, in an attitude of defense. Defense, huh? I'll murder you, you... <laughs> Mr. Lilac is a maneuver known as the old one, two. Right here. Gentlemen, gentlemen, I suggest that Professor Potts and Miss Sugarfuss be married at once in Rancogas. Oh, oh, no, no. Listen, you squirrely cherubs, you eight wise idiots, it wouldn't work. Remember, Patsy, no women aboard. And now, above all women, you want to take a dizzy dame like me. If you'll allow me, I can prove to you the inevitability of this step by higher mathematics. Oh. I can cite examples from history. Or but from I geography. <laughs> Two rivers converging irresistibly. Oh, yes, indeed. Indeed. I can prove it to you by examples from literature. Yes, in biology, too. Well, all oh. of them. Gentlemen, as a grammarian, I know when words cease to be of use. There remains one argument. Come here, dear. Kiss me, please. Oh, no, please, Patsy. No, I... <laughs> oh, Patsy, darling. You see, gentlemen? <laughs> Leaving the professor and Sugarpuss O'Shea to live happily ever after, we return to the Lux Radio Theater and a curtain call for Barbara Stanwyck and Fred McMurray, who gave Ball of Fire quite a whirl tonight. <laughs> it's a pleasure to come back, C.B. The first time I ever worked here, Barbara was on the other side of the microphone, just as she is tonight. Five or six years ago, wasn't it? Mm. Nearly six, Barbara. When we get a good idea, we stick with it. And one of our best ideas is the team of Stanwyck and McMurray. That sounds rather like a vaudeville. Oh, say, speaking of vaudeville, whatever happened to that saxophone you used to play, Fred? <laughs> it's under lock and key. Oh, that seems a shame. I guess you've never heard me play the saxophone. <laughs> <laughs> we will, Fred. For six years, I've been looking for a play that will require your services on that instrument. I haven't given up yet, so you'd better start uh, root tooting. <laughs> How are you going to fix it up with the neighbors? Well, I'll tell you, Fred. Just send over a few cakes of Lux soap and everything will be all right. Mm -hmm. You know, there's something about Lux Soap that makes friends for life. I've used it for years. I think you're practically a charter member of the Lux Soap fan club, Barbara. Have you picked out a play for next week yet, CB? The audience picked it, Fred. They've been asking for this Paramount hit for weeks. The play is Arise, My Love. And our stars will be Loretta Young and Ray Milan. Arise, My Love is a romantic comedy with a background of exciting adventure. The adventures of an aviator and a newspaper woman caught in Europe as war sweeps the continent. Perfect parts for Ray Land and Loretta Young. Well, that's perfect got... entertainment for us next Monday night. <laughs> got so excited. That's got everything it takes to thrill an audience, C.B. Good night. <laughs> Good night, C.B. Good night. Good night. Call the fire was a four-alarm performance. <laughs> Our sponsors, the makers of Lux Toilet Soap, Join me in inviting you to be with us again next Monday night when the Lux Radio Theater presents Loretta Young and Ray Milan in Arise, My Love. This is Cecil B. DeMille saying good night to you from Hollywood. <laughs> Barbara Stanwyck will soon be seen in the Warner Brothers picture, The Gay Sisters. Fred McMurray's next picture is the Paramount production, Take a Letter, Darling. Heard in tonight's play were Felix Valley, Griff Barnett, Leo Cleary, Bruce Payne, and Norman Field as professors, 
Warren Ash as Joe Lilac, Verna Felton as Miss Bragg, Edwin Max as Pastrami, Frank Penny as Asthma, and Arthur Q. Bryan, Charles Peck, and Tyler McVeigh. Tune in next Monday night to hear Ray Milland and Loretta Young in Arise, My Love. Our music was directed by Louis Silvers, and your announcer has been Melville Ruick. This is the Columbia Broadcasting System. <laughs>